hello everyone and welcome to this channel uh, today we will read about uh, human eye so our paired eyes are located in sockets of the skull and these uh, sockets are called orbits a brief account of structure and functions of the human eye is given in the following sections now we will read about parts of an eye the adult human eyeball is nearly a spherical structure you all probably might know what is a sphere like it is a circle in a three dimensional form now the wall of the eyeball is composed of three layers the external layer is composed of a dense connective tissue and it is called the sclera the anterior portion of this layer is called cornea so outermost layer is sclera its outermost part, part is called cornea now the middle layer it is choroid and it contains many blood vessels and it is bluish in color now the choroid layer is thin over the posterior two thirds of the eyeball but it becomes thick in the anterior part to form the ciliary body so the choroid layer which is thick in the anterior part it forms ciliary body and the ciliary body itself continues forward to form pigmented and opaque structure called iris which is visible colored portion of the eye you can see iris uh, when you uh, like throw a diffuse light in somebody's eyes you will see, see a colored portion which is visible like uh, in most of the cases it is brown colored and in some cases it is blue or any other color so it is the visible portion is called iris now the eye wall contains a transparent crystalline lens which is held in place by ligaments attached to the ciliary body so what is what was ciliary body it was the anterior most part of the choroid and it is choroid is the middle layer so uh, it is held the crystalline lens okay which is held in place by ligaments and it is attached to the ciliary body in front of the lens the aperture surrounded by the iris is called the pupil and the diameter of the pupil is regulated by the muscle fibers of the iris so here in this diagram you can see uh, here it is crystalline lens and in just front of it there is an aperture between the two iris which is called pupil and just in front of pupil there is a space which is called aqueous chamber and it is filled by a uh, fluid called aqueous humor and in front of it the layer of anteriormost layer of the first membrane outermost membrane of the eyeball and it is called cornea uh, now the inner layer is the retina and it contains three layers of neural cells from inside to outside these are ganglionic cells bipolar cells and the photoreceptor cells now there are two types of photoreceptor cells namely rods and cones these contain the light sensitive proteins called the photopigments the daylight vision and color vision and functions of cones and the twilight or scotopic vision is the function of the rods the rods contain a purplish red protein called a rhodopsin or visual purple which contains a derivative of vitamin a in the human eye there are three types of cones which possess their own characteristic photopigments that respond to red green and blue lights so there are cones uh, which have three type of photopigments characteristics like red green and blue you can remember it like three colors of a traffic light red green and but in place of yellow there is blue light so the sensations of different colors are produced by various combinations of these cones and their photopigments and when these cones are stimulated equally the sensation of the white light is produced now the optic nerves leaves the eye and the retinal blood vessels enter it at a point medial to and slightly above the posterior pole of the eyeball so you can see in this diagram it is the posterior pole and here the optic nerve leaves the eyeball and here 
the nerve and the uh, blood vessels enters inside the eyeball and just in front of it a blind spot it is uh, having a blind spot point it does not contain any photoreceptor cells so it is named as a blind spot and just above it it a point fovea so we will read about this fovea now at the posterior pole of the eye lateral to the blind spot there is a yellowish pigmented spot called macula lutea and with a central pit it is called fovea what is fovea the fovea is a th thinned out portion of the retina where only the cones are densely packed so in fovea only the cone cells are present and it is a point where the visual acuity is the greatest so if you see anything from uh, just in front just from the front position the image is formed on the fovea and the visual acuity or the resolution of the object is greatest so so you can remember the image uh, very carefully and it will form uh, the image very high and high very high resolution and it will remain inside you for a longer duration okay now the space between the cornea and the lens is called the aqueous chamber and uh, contains a thin water fluid called aqueous humor and uh, the space between the lens and the retina that is behind the lens the, all the space it is called the vitreous chamber it is filled with a transparent gel called vitreous humor now what is the mechanism of vision was the light rays uh, which is in a visible wavelength is focused on a retina through the cornea and lens generate potentials they, the light rays generate uh, potentials or impulses in rods and cones now as mentioned earlier the photosensitive compounds photopigments in the human eyes is composed of opsin a protein and retinal there is there are two uh, proteins uh, opsin and retinal retinal is an aldehyde of vitamin a and light induces dissociation of the retinal from opsin the retinal pigments are dissociates from the opsin and there are changes in the structure of the opsin and this causes the membrane permeability uh, change as a result the potential differences are generated in the photoreceptor cells this produces signal that generates action potential in the ganglion cells to the bipolar cells and these action potentials are transmitted by the optic nerves to the visual cortex area of the brain the visual cortex area which is present in the temporal lobe of the brain where the and neural impulses are analyzed and the image formed on the retina is recognized based on the earlier memory and experience so by this mechanism you can see and recognize any image and further you can judge uh, like which image is this and which object is this uh, which you are seeing so this was the mechanism of the uh, vision and the eye so Thank you for watching this lesson and we will cover the next chapter in subsequent lessons.